Zach with Wingar Wearables. You're one of 12 special people who's going to watch this video to the end. In today's video, what makes a tomahawk a tomahawk? Now, Wingar Wearables started in 2018, and uh, we have put out uh, three very distinctive looking uh, tomahawk designs. And from time to time, uh, people will contact us and be like, hey, you know, I thought tomahawks looked like you know, this, how come your tomahawks look the way they do? Um, and also we've come across, you know, misconceptions about what a tomahawk is. Uh, and there's always room for interpretation, um, but these misconceptions are out there. Um, and so I thought I'd make this video um, because there are folks who may be interested, you know, to hear what, you know, makes a tomahawk a tomahawk. Uh, now, I design tomahawks uh, for modern context, for modern, comfortable, everyday carry. Uh, but it's very important to me to respect the historic roots of the tomahawk. Um, so when I get these questions like, hey, you know, it kind of boils down to what a tomahawk is, uh, I realize it was important for me to have a good understanding of what that is, too, because I never want to lose sight of that. You know, we've come out with three designs. We're going to be coming out with new designs in the future. I never want to lose sight of what fun fundamentally makes a tomahawk a tomahawk. So a bit about my background. I am very passionate about tomahawks. I love tomahawks. I look up everything I can about tomahawks researching. I've been to museums in Washington, D.C., even Auckland, New Zealand, uh, looking at historic examples of tomahawks. Um, and, you know, I've, I've learned a lot along the way. I want to share that information with you in this video on what I think makes a tomahawk a tomahawk. Uh, during the course of, of my work to design our distinctive tomahawks, I wanted those designs to be driven by historic originals, not reproductions, you know, make them modern for everyday carry today in our modern context, but I did want them to be derived from historic originals. And in the course of that, I reached out to the very niche community of tomahawk experts. So. Uh, Jack Vargo mentored me for, uh, you know, years. He passed away in 2020, but he was an archaeologist and a historic blacksmith. And he made, you know, authentic, uh, very close to authentic uh, reproductions of historic spike tomahawks and, and pipe tomahawks like these two. Um, but, um, you know, he wrote the book on spike tomahawks. I've also, you know, reached out to Mark Miller. Uh, who runs the website for tradetomahawks.com. So definitely check that out. Now, there's not going to be a clean definition of what makes a tomahawk a tomahawk, even among the experts, there's going to be disagreement. But, um, you know, those disagreements are, are about interpretations and classifications that get a little bit boring. Um, the definitions that I've heard that seem to be misconceptions are, are mostly what this video is about. So let's get into definitions. Now, words mean things, and the meaning of words can change over time. If you use the word tomahawk in the 1750s in North America, people would know exactly what you were referring to. If you use the word tomahawk today, it could re be referring to a cruise missile, a cut of steak, or an axe that's used as a weapon. Um, and if you go back to the early 1600s, some of the earliest contact between Europeans and Native Americans where the word tomahawk came up, in the historic accounts, it often referred to both the war club and the metal trade axe that was used as weapons. Both of these essentially fulfilled the same purpose. After you discharged your muzzleloader, uh, you then use these as primary weapons to vanquish your enemies. Uh, but over time, war club stopped being used, uh, referred to as a tomahawk. It was referred to as a war club or a club hammer, that sort of thing. And the word tomahawk evolved to refer only to the metal ax used in war. And an analogy of that would be like Pizza, the word. We know exactly what pizza is today. But there were things they called pizza made in, you know, late medieval through the early 1800s in Italy that we would look at today and we would say that is not a pizza. 
So I've seen two attempts to define what a tomahawk is, and they have a lot of misconceptions baked in them. Uh, the first one de tries to define a tomahawk as a small light axe used by Native American peoples. The problem with that is it includes axes that were definitely not tomahawks. So for instance, one of the common trade axes uh, was uh, this style uh, that was used by Native American women to harvest firewood. It was a light forestry axe or hatchet. Uh, these were not serving a as a primary role as a weapon. Uh, many of them never saw any use other than hacking wood. Now, if you were out there harvesting firewood and you were attacked by a man or a beast, well, if it's the only thing you got on you, then yeah, you could use this like a weapon. Uh, but, you know, experts today would not classify these as tomahawks. Um, the other problem with the definition is it excludes many tomahawks that were used by non-native people. So uh, there were uh, white people on the frontier that were using tomahawks. Uh, and there were, if you go all the way over to New Zealand, uh, Maori tribesmen that replaced their war clubs with metal trade axes that they mounted on whalebone handles and they used them as tomahawks and they were referred to, um, you know, in, in historic accounts as tomahawks. This also excludes tomahawks used today by soldiers and civilians. Uh, so that definition seems to include things that shouldn't be tomahawks and exclude a whole lot of things that are definitely tomahawks. So there's a second tomahawk definition that I've heard. Um, it seems to be an attempt to differentiate between tomahawks and hatchets. And I've seen it come up over and over again. Um, and it tries to define the tomahawk as a light axe that features a friction fit tapered drop to the top handle. And what I'm referring to is an axe whose eye is tapered and the handle is tapered. So you can insert it from the top and then sort of friction fit it on. And this example I'm holding is a uh, highly modified cold steel trail hawk. Now these head handle connections did exist historically. Um, they were popular uh, axe head handle connections, both in historically in Europe and seen in uh, North America. And the reason they were used in the North American trade axe community uh, was back in the day, it saved a lot of money. What you do is you would make the axe head in Europe and then you'd pack a bunch of them on a ship that would then go overseas to North America. And then you would unpack them sell them to people uh, that would then make the handles themselves. It was just a way to save on shipping costs. Um, but there were a whole lot of tomahawks out there that did not feature this head handle connection. So for instance, this tomahawk in my hands right now is based on a, a historic spike tomahawk and many spike tomahawks featured a wedged head handle connection. Uh, just numerous examples. That was a very popular method of head handle connection. It matches that of many hatchets, wood handled hatchets today using a, a wooden wedge or a metal wedge. Well, a lot of spike tomahawks and other tomahawks use exactly that same head handle connection. Um, I've even uh, seen a couple of examples of tomahawks that featured langets. So langets being little flanges of metal uh, that come down and are screwed or pinned to the handle. Uh, and those are separate pieces. And you see lingots in medieval weapons, in boarding axes, in trench axes. And there, I've seen a couple of examples of uh, historic spike tomahawks or, or tomahawks in general that had those lingots on them. Um, and very similar to lingots, you have this example. Uh, this was made in Chester County, Pennsylvania. I'm in Chester County, Pennsylvania. Uh, so this maker was many miles north of me, um, you know, a couple hundred years ago, but you can see he forged out these iron plates running down the axe head, which were then pinned uh, to the handle. It's a tomahawk, but it isn't constructed with that taper drop to the top head handle connection. Uh, you even have tomahawks that had, uh, from that metal axe head, this long tapered uh, tang that was deeply set into the wooden handle and capped off with a ferrule. These were common for uh, 
common head handle connection for halberd style tomahawks, which were not a terribly common tomahawk, but still that method of head handle connection was often used for them. Um, and you have all metal tomahawks. So you have the uh, you know, iron and steel axe head, you know, hand forged, welded to an iron handle. Uh, so these look very, very similar to a medieval hurl bat, but they were on the North American frontier as a tomahawk serving as a weapon. And there are other diverse head handle connections. Uh, so for instance, here, the single example is a halberd style tomahawk where the spike converts into a threaded rod and the head is, uh, you know, threaded onto the handle. And many pipe tomahawks did not feature that taper drop through the top head handle connection. So this example here was also made by Jack Vargo off of a historic original. So the handle is thicker than the eye in this section. And so the head is sandwiched between the handle and this metal cap that is nailed into place. And there are examples of pipe tomahawks where the head was fitted down onto the handle and you had a cap either pinned, screwed, or nailed on that held it in place, in addition to the gasket for, you know, smoking purposes. And there are examples where I cannot really tell you how the head was secured to the handle. So I, when I went to, uh, you know, the Auckland New Zealand War Museum, there were numerous examples of whalebone handled tomahawks. I don't know how they connected these to the heads. I presume they were wedged. I was able to get a close look at them, but I couldn't quite tell. And today there are other methods of head handle connection. You can't get a stronger head handle connection than a monolithic piece of steel that you cut the shape of the tomahawk out of. So today full tang tomahawks are popular. You know, you water jet cut or machine it out. You freehand grind or machine grind the edge. It's a tomahawk. It serves today as, as a weapon and as a utility tool. Um, also, we have potentially future tomahawk designs. Like you could have an entire metal tomahawk that's cast or additively manufactured, like 3D metal printing. That could be done. It could serve the role. So I think it's clear you cannot define a tomahawk by its method of construction. Uh, but what is the best way to define a tomahawk? Uh, I don't think there's going to be a clear, simple way to do it. The best definition I can come up with, a tomahawk is a light, compact, one-handed axe that serves as a weapon and may have additional functions. So that would accurately apply to historic tomahawks and modern-day tomahawks. So for instance, this spontoon tomahawk has no functional edge for bushcraft or knife-like applications. It'll still bury into someone's head, though and it's got a pipe that you can smoke. It really doesn't have any utility application. It can definitely serve as a weapon. Many hammer pole tomahawks and spike tomahawks clearly have both combative and utility applications. And it could apply to future tomahawks. You know, there could be some future type of tomahawk that we haven't even thought of yet. It may have some additional function that doesn't, hasn't existed in the past, but could exist in the future. Uh, so I think that definition is very inclusive. One of the problems I have with the definition is if you applied it to the past in different contexts, it could include medieval hurl bats, you know, the Francisca used in the Dark Ages, or even these, uh, you know, funky African war hatchets. Uh, so the definition is not perfect, but it is kind of interesting to think that you know, the word tomahawk wasn't used in those time periods because it didn't exist, right, in those areas and time periods. But, you know, if it did exist, would they refer to those in historic accounts as tomahawks? I don't know. It's interesting to think about. Anyway, if you have a better definition for tomahawks, put it in comments below. Uh, I'm really thankful that, you know, you guys have tuned in on this video. Uh, you're one of 12 special people who watched it to the end. Share it with a friend so 13 will have watched it. And remember to be edgy.